And a very good morning to you. This is Newsline Live. We're broadcasting, as we always do, from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Clamwell. And um, whilst the world is uh, dealing with a pandemic, COVID-19, with the uh, 1.5 million people confirmed all over the world uh, having confirmed cases of uh, COVID-19, um, with uh, 88,551 uh, sadly having died. In Sri Lanka too, whilst we are all coping with that, there is one segment uh, of society whose problems are even more exaggerated now that the law enforcement authorities and the support agencies and so on are all very busy uh, dealing with that and so on. And that is uh, the lot of the uh, women and children who are being abused in a, uh, in a number of ways. To discuss the impact of what is happening to that segment of society, we've got here um, a lady who was the former chairperson of the uh, National Women's and Child Protection Agency and uh, who was uh, not removed but who, was, uh, who had somebody else appointed uh, while she was in place. She's right here. We're not going to discuss too much about that, but she's right here this morning, uh, Mrs. Marini de Oliveira. Very good uh, morning to you, madam. Good morning, Faraz. And uh, thank, thank you, you for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Tell, tell us, um, whilst we are, uh, the authorities are all dealing with COVID-19, what's happening to the lot of the people, the women especially, uh, and, and as a result, the children who are being abused, you know, domestic violence and that sort of thing. Um, How is that? I mean, the police must be... I know that they're busy. I've seen it with my own eyes. There's a, st a steady stream of crowds in any police station. So tell us about how these people are coping. What, how can they cope? For a lot of people, uh, due to the curfew, their home has turned into a hell because the man who is a wage earner and the woman who is a carer have to live under the same roof for 24 hours for days and days. So uh, in our country where there's a patriarch patriarchal ideology uh, prevailing, it's a very patriarchal society, uh, most men who are overgrown babies cannot cope with the situation. Uh, when they cannot go out with their friends and enjoy a tot, uh, they take it on the women and uh, the children are silent witnesses uh, to this torture and cruel and degrading treatment of the person they love most, their mother. Uh, also, if you look at the Prevention of Domestic Violence Act number 34 of 2005, the police have to play a pivotal role in uh, not only taking down the complaint properly, but also making an application for a protection order to the nearest magistrate's court. If the situation becomes impossible for the victim, usually the woman, the wife and the child or children. But this does not happen. Uh, I have heard several stories during the last few days where the police have shooed away the victims uh, who have come to the police station to make complaints and not even far from taking down the complaint have not even listened to the victim but chased them away. Um, and honestly, um, uh, I know that you are the, the founder of uh, an organization. Yes, I'm the uh, founder of Sisters at Law. Sisters at Law. Is your phone ringing off the hook or is it, it, are there people even frightened to phone you? Uh, we have a hotline uh, which is working uh, 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, the people are not aware, people, especially at grassroots uh, uh, level, uh, uh, in village, at village level are not aware of our existence. 
Um, so uh, I think uh, at every divisional secretariat and district secretariat, there's a huge band of government uh, graduates like women development officers, child protection officers, health officers, NGO coordinators, all these people are there. Uh, they should work from home and at least uh, respond uh, to these victims uh, and uh, pass on the numbers of organizations such as ours so that these people could contact us and get some relief. Indeed. And um, please, uh, have, have your cup of tea, uh, um, Mrs. Uh, De Oliveira. And um, it's, not like, uh, we, we, it's not like we can wash our hands off the problem because it is a problem and we need to address it amidst everything else. Yes, it's a serious rule of law problem. Right. Here we see as opposed to rule of law, there's rule of power in the household. Right. Uh, the man is exercising power and control over his helpless wife and the children. Right. The wage earner, earner is taking, uh, is letting out steam and using physical, psycholo psychological and other forms of violence on the helpless wife and the children. Now, there was a, there was a very interesting um, story that you were uh, involved in, and uh, the law doesn't permit uh, uh, either of us to mention the name and so on. But uh, uh, so we're going to talk around, uh, around that, bearing in mind that we can't mention the names. The, this, this case uh, that was in the Polonaro area, that, that was a pretty classic case because she was, uh, the, the lady uh, was actually being abused um, and she had two young children and yet she couldn't do anything about it. Yes. Uh, and she turned to, to your organization somehow. Um, tell us about that, please. Uh, she was a 26-year-old mother of two. The older child was four years and the younger child was four months. She was breastfeeding the young child, but she was unable to do so because every day uh, after work, uh, her husband was working in a factory uh, of essential services mm -hmm. and uh, used to come and beat her up. So every day uh, he used to come home at seven o'clock. From three o'clock, uh, after going from pillar to post, uh, uh, she had got my number. After several phone calls to government agencies, one of them had got so fed up and given my number just to stop her calling. Uh, she called me and said, I'm terrified now. He, he's coming in another four hours and I can't look after my children. I can't nurse my child because I'm shivering. And she was in the middle of the jungle. Uh, an elephant infested area. So I was, I had even arranged a guest house for her to run away with her children and a safe place. She's saying, Madam, what are you talking? Uh, I, I can't go like that. The elephants will attack me. Then I said, can't you find a, a trisha that will take you? No, no, it's not possible. Then she kept on telling me, tonight I'm going to get killed. For three days we were going on. I said, please wait. She said, no, you'll have to take me uh, to my mother's house, which is very far away from three, there, from there. Uh, so so I called uh, the entire police hierarchy and I said please arrange a vehicle for this lady to go to her mother's place place of safety till mm -hmm. I handle the case because it's curfew and I cannot approach her I can only speak to her over the phone yeah. and reassure her but each time I uh, tell her please take it easy, uh, be quiet when he comes. Uh, the next time uh, she calls me, she says, I'm calling from the back of the house, from the forest. He, he's trying to attack me. I have injuries all over my face and neck. And uh, I can't hear in one ear. I hear a, a, a echoing noise in one ear. So I, I was assaulted last night. So I felt that I couldn't do it anymore, that I had to uh, travel 229 kilometers without a curfew pass uh, and rescue her. What did you tell the checkpoints? Uh, the checkpoints were very nice. Um, when I said, uh, when, I, when I showed my lawyer's identity card, right. it was during those two days that uh, we could go to court. Right. Uh, and also I had with me uh, the local government MP uh, for, for Maharagama. 
Mrs. Chandrika Adisoisa, a real woman leader who said, I can't let you go alone. And I was going to go in a trisha because no vehicle was willing to, to take me Polenarua. to Polonarua. And the trisha driver said, it'll take six hours, madam, but you're so keen and you're so uh, passionate, I have to take you. Then uh, this local government woman MP, uh, Chandrika Adisoisa, said, you're doing nothing of the sort. There's a van uh, driven by a retired police officer. I'm going to arrange that. Uh, you're coming to my house and going there. So I... Uh, so you got you in something on some... Yeah, yeah. So the checkpoints were there. They kept questioning me. And, yeah. uh, but you explained... I, I explained to them and lawyer. then uh, because we don't, uh, my we, identity. We don't want the public trying this. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know, this is, this is not some very story risky. you're going to pitch. Yes, mm. because everyone I spoke to, uh, the family and the extended family, and, and my friends and the funders said, you're taking your International Woman of Courage Award a little too far. You're taking it a little too seriously. There's curfew in the country. I uh, forgot to mention that. I'm so yeah. sorry. Uh, Marina de Oliveira is actually the winner of the International Woman of Courage Award. 2019. 2019, which is on our program at the US time that we Secretary marked that and celebrated uh, that award. Uh, do forgive me for not mentioning that, uh, but it's very important. But anyway, ca carry on. What happened? You reached there? Uh, with difficulty, we reached there. And uh, when, we, when we reached the place where she was living, uh, it did not have a tarred road. So the man, the, the driver said, how, Madam, how can we go? There's no tarred road. I said, just drive on. If we uh, stall, we have, we, we, we'll think we about stall, it then. we stall, we stall. We th we'll solve that problem at that point. Just accelerate and just go. And she kept on calling and asking from early in the morning. From the time we set off, what time are you coming? I can't wait anymore. I said, pack all your clothes and get ready to jump out of the house. Because uh, 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 when the police heard that, my, that I had left Colombo, they had asked the husband to come to the police station. Mm -hmm. And the husband was not at home. But the mother-in-law and father-in-law were peeping from the adjoining house mm -hmm. and trying to prevent her from leaving. So I said, pack everything in uh, silly, silly bags and uh, be ready to jump out of the house. I I'm coming. And I also took my trisha driver because to help us to take the uh, things. So uh, with the greatest difficulty, we found the place, went through the jungle. It was like uh, I've been to Nairobi, mm -hmm. African safari. Uh, I, I got a similar feeling. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was all. You uh, felt it in, inside uh, of Mara. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, Masai Mara, mm. uh, that kind of atmosphere. So I, I went to the house. She, she was peeping out of the window. Then, then I grabbed the little child, and she came with the other child and the trisha driver who accompanied us, uh, quickly brought the things to the vehicle, mm -hmm. and we drove off. And then the police kept calling and uh, saying, come to the police station. We want to settle this case. Yeah. Uh, I didn't go to the police station. I went straight to the hospital, Polenaru Hospital. And uh, then they said, on admission, I had to admit her and then... There, there, there were people who were sick and coughing, and they said, keep your distance. So we left the older child in the vehicle uh, with the, uh, the local government woman MP mm -hmm. and the driver. And the, oh, she came with you? She came with me. She said, I can't allow you to go alone. These are the real women leaders. They say, vote for women. But we cannot just vote for flower pots. We have to vote for people who, who help, help people. Mm. They are servants of the real people. Real people. Yeah, real, real people, people, real women who serve other women. We don't want uh, uh, people, dolls, uh, who are seated on their seats and who are insensitive to the needs of other women. Hmm. She, she came with me, and because she came, I could leave the older child in the vehicle, and I went with the mother and the baby uh, into the hospital. When they saw the injuries, they said, oh, we have to ward her. I said, are you joking? I said, how long will this take? They said, oh, about a week, maybe two, because all the specialists have to. I said, I'm joking, I have to get back to Colombo and I don't have a curfew yeah. pass. Uh, they said, no, 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 we can't. Uh, so I said, uh, the JMO has to give a report because I have to go to court after this and get a protection order against this man. Yeah. This woman's uh, life is in danger. I said, uh, they were attending, talking about corona and all that. So yeah. then uh, finally, uh, she was there and the doctors examined and she was uh, warded and then... Uh, I was running like a headless chicken, and finally we found the uh, JMO, who was very nice, uh, Dr. Vaidya Ratna, who, and his team uh, uh, 
did the investigations and then because so there was evidence of of, of uh, yes physical abuse if we went to the naked eye you could see her face uh, was oh. all yeah, yeah, full of injuries and her neck but why does one man want to do that to another yes that's being. what the Polonaro police was saying he loves her very much and he wants her back I said that's a funny kind of love where you express love by, uh, by uh, yeah, almost killing the woman yeah yeah so so you went to court and went no to, so to I went to the medicine? hospital yeah she's warded now I'm helpless and, and I said please you have to give the report because I have had experience it takes days or weeks uh, to get a JMO report. Right. So at once uh, they sprung into action and the entire team uh, examined her and uh, gave the report. Then she was referred to the ENT uh, sp specialist who looked at her ear and said that there's a perforation. And uh, all this time uh, the little child was demanding milk and it was very difficult. Uh, so after a couple of hours she was discharged and we rushed uh, to the courthouse um, and the judge had just finished sittings and gone back to his bungalow. And when I explained the situation to the staff at the magistrate's court, the judge rushed back in five minutes. I was handwriting uh, the application for the protection order and Chandrika Adi the uh, oh. woman leader was uh, All Island JP. So she was doing the affidavit after speaking to the woman because we didn't know the exact details of the case to do mm -hmm. this and go. No communications were open so, so we had to handwrite everything in duplicate no. and while we were doing that the uh, court officers informed us that the judge had arrived so we quickly finished that and I made my submission to him. He was very receptive. Uh, he he uh, spoke to the victim and he listened to my submission. Mm -hmm. And what came to my mind is what uh, famous uh, Supreme Court Justice of the United States, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, mm. uh, said uh, during uh, her confirmation hearings in the U.S. Supreme Court in 1993. She said, I have only one passion and it is to be a good judge and to judge fairly. That's what I saw in Magistrate Asela de Silva. He rose to the occasion. He gave an order. He said he will be produced before me tomorrow uh, and I will remand him. Uh, he gave, uh, and he gave a protection order and said, uh, what are you going to do with this victim and her ch two children? I said, I'm going to take her far away to her uh, mother's house where she's going right. to be safe but once before this she had been in the mother's house and this man while the older child was having his rice and curry the rice and curry was strewn all over the place he grabbed the child and he ran off so I said it's not safe although I'm leaving her there but it's her wish that she should go there although I have two shelters one in Colombo and in Hikadu and I can house her there she is keen to go to her mother and be with her mother and sister I want to take her there after this court hearing she said, no, I'm going to issue a protection order saying that he cannot come anywhere near the mother's house. You don't worry, you take her there. And he said, uh, I will send you the proper order. This is only a handwritten order. And uh, it's amazing to have mm. judges like this, you know, in well, the um, wilderness. <laughs> I, I, am, um, I am so uh, happy, uh, and I'm sure our viewers uh, will appreciate that there are people still willing to be um, upholding the rule of law and uh, in this country with all its complexities and uh, these simple things uh, uh, have become realities it's excellent uh, now then uh, could you give us that name the number of your hotline please and uh, perhaps our control room will do uh, make take magical moments to actually type it up and put it on a card on the screen but tell me the number it's my mobile number, 0714-810-979. And uh, they'll be making that card up and it'll come on the screen. It's Sisters at Law. Um, it's the mobile number. Uh, in the meantime, if you have questions for the program, uh, we are in conversation with uh, Marini uh, de Oliveira. She is the founder uh, and uh, very much active uh, with the organization called Sisters at Law. Uh, it um, helps, uh, legally helps uh, women and children in distress and who need that. There you go, Sisters at Law, 0714 
010-810-979. Don't send the questions there. Call, them, call that number with your problems. Questions is on 072-300-305. Now then, um, it's absolutely remarkable uh, and, uh, that this is happening. And uh, I know that we have a, another division and so on. This is the stuff that a movie can be made of, um, you know, because it is a movie with a, uh, with a public message, isn't it? Uh, that we mustn't, in between all our troubles, we mustn't forget the people who are continuing to be troubled. And we can't just forget them because we have COVID-19 on our hands or any other disaster on our hands. However much difficult it is, we must be able to take, make space in our lives uh, for this sort of thing as well. It's absolutely essential. And uh, we welcome your questions by SMS 072 300 305. Um, now then, how about uh, with, with uh, COVID-19 and so on, um, do you, have you detected a, even a slight decrease in 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 abuse or are uh, are these cases still very no, much they're on, on the, the increase top. and people don't know where to turn to because the government agencies that are supposed to deal with it are dysfunctional well, they're, in, well, they're dead is that before covid as well and they were partially dead before covid now they are completely and what about the government agencies? What I'm speaking of the government agencies. Like the, the National Child Protection? Protection uh, the National Committee on Women, the Gender yeah. Complaints Bureau. Where are they? In this day of uh, IT and technology, uh, people can be contacted. Right. All over the world, people are working from home. Where are these people? Where are yeah. the graduates who are posted to the divisional secretariats and the district secretariats who are supposed to support these victims and at least answer a phone call and refer them to us? No, they, are, they, are, they, have, they cannot be found. Exactly. Okay. Now then, um, how, how does the government fund these things? Is the it only through the National the Child Protection? Yes, the government funds these government agencies through their uh, treasury uh, budget. And what are the other organizations that help uh, such cases? Are there, is apart from yours, I mean, you, you help uh, from the legal aspect. Legal but, and we have a counseling uh, right. segment. Uh, and you have safe houses. We have two safe houses. Right. No, we can't be telling you where the safe house is. No, <laughs> it's not done. All right. Um, how would you like the public to help? How would you, um, how would you spread that message? For them to be uh, compassionate, to have humaneness, to have empathy. It, it's not, uh, oh, are my three meals there? I'm okay. Uh, my, my pet is okay. Let's close the doors and windows and wait, let the other people suffer. That's what everyone asked me to do when I got a call from the wilderness of Polanarua. Right. Why do you want to go there? Why do you want to expose yourself? What about social distancing? You have to go to the police station. You have to go to the hospital. You have to go to courts. Why don't you stay at home and uh, meditate? Uh, why do you want to go there? Everyone and, was asking me that question. Uh, thank you for the questions, and here we go. Um, somebody's just saying that what you've been telling us um, just shows that politicians are no longer needed. Professionals know what they're doing. I don't want to take you down a political route, but do the, uh, are, is there enough help coming from the professionals? Would you like to see hordes more join you in your... Yes, yes. I had this uh, counsellor who uh, has come forward, uh, Dr. Miloli uh, Di Almeida, and, and she does counselling free. These people, once I rescue them, uh, they need someone to talk to, to open up. So uh, people are coming forward, and, and my childhood friend uh, Niranji Guru Singh is helping me with the uh, accounts and the administration. I can't do it uh, single-handedly, and a whole lot of uh, law students and apprentices, uh, we have formed ourselves into a network, and, and we are working, and, and myself and my executive director, Niranji, we are working without a cent. Uh, 
we are we are uh, not earning a salary we are not getting any money but you are but you're doing a service you'd like other people to help to yes. join you yes in this and, and, uh, and even to, to pay equality. our staff salaries we had a, a week sleepless night how, how, how we were going to pay the salaries this month uh, those who are at the shelters and at head office it's the sisters at law numbers coming up in your screen again the hotline for for that uh, uh, very essential service isn't it that's it an is. essential service it is it's a matter of life and death i don't know where are these three people this 26 year old mother and her two infants would have been if i didn't rescue her there would have been three coffins in that house goodness me now then i just want to uh, some of the questions is that i we need to make this absolutely clear the media doctors lawyers can move about during curfew the members of the public who are not in that category need special permission please do not test the system by trying to tell porcupines lies and go out there because you will be arrested and you will face the consequences and there's very little sympathy out there at the moment for people who are breaking the law um, without any, there, there's no re, you can't break the law full stop. If you are a person in the media, if you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, and or if you have a valid curfew pass, which is only issued for a real genuine reason, other than that, you should be at home. There is, there, please remember that. Um, Marina de Oliveira went to rescue somebody in. Uh, Paula Narua, Marina de Oliveira is a lawyer and she was doing her job and her passion as well. So please, we've made that absolutely clear. Uh, now then, uh, several, several questions, including one which is very current, uh, and that is this. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say this. Uh, uh, you may also consider answering this. I know your guest cannot answer, but related parties will hear this. Pharmacies are to be open between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. I have a pharmacy on the top of my lane on the main road. Am I permitted to go to the pharmacy without a curfew pass? Please request all your channels to announce the correct position. What do you think? I mean, on the one hand, there's a rule, there's an order that pharmacies can be open. Um, but this man doesn't live above the pharmacy. He lives slightly away. He has Common to sense a, says that you can. He has to get a curfew pass from the OIC of the area, right. officer in charge of the police station. So he must go to the police station, yes. and he can go there. But if he's so if he's being stopped on the way, he, he says, says, "I'm, I'm going, going to the there. police station." Right. Okay. So you can't. Again, you need to be following a logical route. Mm. You need to be going to the police station to get your pass, uh, and that's the right way of doing it. Yes. And. Uh, needless to say, take all the documents that you need, need yeah. to, to, prove to prove your case. Um, and uh, let's, let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the other questions that's coming forward this, uh, this morning. Uh, <clears throat> what response have you received from the agencies like Human Rights uh, Watchdog, um, Amnesty International, etc.? I haven't had any response and I have not approached them. But they have uh, various officers, or in, they have a presence in this country. I have not been in contact. They haven't contacted, contacted you. Contacted, yeah, yeah. We are focusing on the victims and not uh, on other people. Uh, those several task forces have been established. There is no relief to the uh, lockdown peop uh, people at reasonable prices. I heard that people are robbed by pawning centers, distribution people. Uh, and so on. Um, this is this is a general question uh, to to be discussed. One can't really expect the government to do everything, because but the government can delegate to able people delegate. and to able organisations. They can facilitate. They can facilitate. That is. They can they give mean. us recognition, which Indeed. we have not got. Indeed. Um, 
The, sir, the domestic violence uh, is the result of the gradual deterioration of society and uh, uncontrolled inflation, in short, economic problems. Mm. Is, there, is there a relationship to, to this? Uh, is, it, is, is there a correlation? If we go back to our case study, uh, the, the victim had got a Samurdi loan and given the entire loan amount to the husband. Uh, but that night, uh, on the 1st of April, she was being beaten up because she had a few thousands to buy provisions for herself and the two children. Uh, he wanted that as well. So it's nothing to do with the cost of living. She had hidden a few thousand rupee notes. So he wanted that, that money? Uh, to go and have his drink. Oh, so this Alco is uh, yeah, alcohol yeah, related? Yeah, yeah, alcohol related. And in the new experience, this is uh, this problem is an intense problem. It is, it is, because it's hidden. It happens behind closed doors. So uh, there are no statistics, nothing. On only people calling out and a random person hearing that call and responding to that call. Well, Marina de Oliveira, as we come to the end of our program this morning, um, I'd like to. Uh, say thank you for all the work that you are doing uh, in this very uh, particular segment of uh, of society, people who need uh, need help, and uh, your uh, proactiveness is uh, um, is brilliant. Thank, um, you. thank you very much. And uh, once again, I'm going to leave you with the uh, the uh, hotline number for Sisters at Law. And um, <clears throat> it's coming up on your screen right now. Um, thank you very much uh, again, uh, Marina de Oliveira. Thank you for inviting me uh, and giving a, me the opportunity. It's an absolute pleasure on behalf of uh, our network, uh, our organization. I'd like to really thank you for the sterling work that you're doing. And um, talking about uh, sterling work, let's not forget the wonderful work that our healthcare workers are mm -hmm. carrying out. Uh, our tri forces are out there. The police are sympathetic to a point, uh, and uh, they, uh, they they're there to help the public. Uh, remember that when they are enforcing the law in this case where COVID-19 is concerned, they're actually saving you, saving your life, saving the lives of anyone and everyone. So um, have a bit more understanding. Stay safe. Stay distanced. And remember that in this, we are all together. We are one. One country, one nation, one law, too. Take care.